This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, because there has been some extreme dedication in the comment section, and as a little wintertime treat, it's time for the Order 1886. This still looks really good, I have to say, graphically. Really like it. <laughs> Light a lightning strike in your hands. And they haven't tried to confine it to, I don't know, a Martini Henry set of lines for a gun. They've gone all out on it. Like, this is a new class of weapon. It's going to look different. And I agree that it should. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to guns in games, make sure to subscribe, check out our previous episodes, and, as if I have to say it, be sure to let us know in the comment section what other games or guns you'd like to see on the show. Right, over to Jonathan and some of the weapons from the Order 1886. That is looking pretty good. I won't try to mimic every <laughs> movement of the gun, but all the basic lines are there. More than basic, it's pretty spot on. This is a Mark II Webley revolver. British military. Finger on the trigger, of course, because this is the 19th century and nobody cares about trigger discipline in the 19th century or indeed the first half of the 20th. Now, I've chosen one with a broken ejector. Annoyingly, that should pop up as it did in the, in the game. Now, they're calling it a Mark I service revolver. The Mark I has a, a hump on the frame. They removed that for the Mark II. Definitely the right technology level. Uh, it's a parallel universe, so who knows? You know, things are coming into service quicker. Basic design existed, or would have existed, obviously, by then. It's just not been mass produced. It would have been better to choose something that fits the period for me. I suppose if they're the uh, special ops <laughs> sort of faction, maybe they got an early look in. Yeah, you can always deploy that sort of logic for this, for this kind of thing. It's fine. Now this thing is weird. This is more what I would expect to see in this game from what I've heard and seen of it. You know, we had self-loading and even automatic rifles in theory by the end of the 19th century. Maxim has a, an 1891 patent for a self-loading rifle. This is very clearly 1930s tech. What it feels like is a Browning automatic rifle projected back in time by several decades and given some decorative embellishments. And an underslung rocket launcher, I think? I was going to ask you what that was because I wasn't quite clear, but yeah. I think it's an air launcher in game. An air launcher? So like a, a big fat air rifle. That's kind of intriguing. And it's a bit weird that you'd make that launch using air, but the gun is still a conventional cartridge firearm. We have a very spindly looking gas tube on top of the weapon that looks a little bit inadequate for its needs, unless it's a very early direct impingement design, which I well, heck, it could be, couldn't it? M2 Falchion. M2 is a curious designation. There's nothing called M1, M2 this early. The Americans were using M for military, I believe. M1 helmet, M1 tank, M1 rifle. That is not a 19th century thing. Hence, um, M1903, Springfield, for example. They used the year until they didn't. Overall, I think it's cool. It fits the aesthetic really nicely. It's plausible mechanically, just maybe not the air launcher thing. Thumb hole stock and some engraving goes a long way. I keep saying steampunk. I know it's not technically steampunk, but the setting is evocative of that. Fantasy Victorian. Now, we're on safer ground with the C96, or the C81. Now, that's curious. Well, it isn't. It's because the game is set in 1886, so they're trying to say that the C96 was quite a few years earlier than it really was, and also that it has a detachable box magazine and is a machine pistol. Now, machine and pistola was not the term used. The fully automatic C96 variant, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is the Schnellfeuer. Some of you might be looking at this thing, as well as the extended magazine that's removable, and thinking, eh, it looks a bit weird, it doesn't look right, it doesn't have that cone or uh, ring-shaped hammer, or even the little hammer with the hole in it that we're used to. It doesn't. However, the 1896 first version of the um, C96 does have a spur hammer shaped like that. Now, please excuse the missing bits. This is a very rare factory sectioned example. It's the only one we have that is this early. Literally has 1896 marked on it. And Sister Mauser, 
few other markings there. Hopefully you can make out. And you'll notice from the fact that I'm showing you that it doesn't have an adjustable ladder type rear sight, tangent type rear sight, and neither does the one in the game. So this is a match for the gun in the game. This stepped barrel here, where there's a, a pronounced step down from the frame, the upper frame, to the barrel, that's an early feature, and that's on this video game version as well. So it's actually correct for the original 1896, the very early 1896 version of the gun, the prototype, basically. Except for no solid floor plate and 10-round and clip, it's got the much later 1930s replaceable magazine but it's closer than you might think and it's quite a, a cool semi-fantasy version of this iconic handgun uh, one of the things that i've written uh well a book about so you might like to check that out <laughs> Right, C78, I think that's it. Yeah, C78. Now, that's very clearly a C93 Borchardt pistol. This is it in its uh, holster stock, a bit like the C96. It came with a holster stock, but it was a leather holster strapped to the uh, stock paddle, as it were. Now, the game version is a bit weirdly different. The Borchardt was never particularly wieldy. <laughs> I think guys at the time with revolvers would have looked at it as scants <laughs> and obviously people today used to things like 1911s glocks whatever will go what the heck or lugers for that matter since this was developed by georg luger into the infamous parabellum or luger pistol and the luger took this ridiculous frank sorry hugo but frankly ridiculous overhanging mainspring and toggle assembly almost a sort of bullpup arrangement actually and converted it into that sharply angled grip that we know today uh, move the rest of it forwards. It's very cool though, extremely cool, very, very rare now and valuable in various ways. Beautifully finished, of course, as everything at this time was machined, but then hand finished. Game has weirdly changed the lines. It doesn't have that slightly more graceful set of curves at the back. It's kind of blockier than that. And it's too chunky at the back. There's no reason to not just copy this exactly. So despite this being a fantasy game, I really wish they'd stuck with the proper Borchardt design. Very unusual, even at the time, and certainly now. This is one of the weirder weapons that Nikola Tesla makes for the faction. Ah, uh, you see, now we're in steampunk territory. Needless to say, absolutely no way in the Victorian period, even today, really, that you can have a reliable, lethal, directed energy weapon without some massive battery backpack power supply. Maybe we could do that now with a big backpack, but nobody has. And certainly this handheld thing, this is pure fantasy, playing on that you know, legendary, literally legendary, take on the whole Nikola Tesla technology. Extremely cool, should be in the game. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. Looks good as well, I think. Brass, we've got rods, we've got yeah, it looks, looks very steampunk. And this was at a time when steampunk was really popular. I like the charge up and the very lightning nature of it. The energy beam is, is going from point A to point B, but in the middle, it's going wherever. It's like natural lightning or to the Tesla coil. That's, you know, electricity jumps from, from point to point. At least that's how it looks. Very different, very distinctive. I've seen other uh, energy weapons in games try to do this, but I think this is much more successful. Really like it. <laughs> Light a lightning strike in your hands. And they haven't tried to confine it to, I don't know, a Martini Henry set of lines for a gun. They've gone all out on it. Like, this is a new class of weapon. It's going to look different. And I agree that it should. Very interesting inclusion here. Not the Pedersen device, Pedersen rifle. Lots of places to learn about the Pedersen. The relevance here is that it's a an unusual self-loading rifle design. And as you see depicted here, it has that toggle. Very distinctive Luger toggle mechanism. That's it locked open on its own follower. It's an empty magazine. Actually a pretty impressive, decently reliable, plausible design, but way too modern for this game. This is in, in reality a rival to the M1 Garand rifle. This one is in its original 276 caliber, so a smaller diameter bullet, but still a full, relatively full power cartridge. M82, it's obviously not, not that's just made up. 
they've taken a design from from quite far in the future and and put it back in the in the past. Uh, you might think that the the flat coming up into your eye line is a distraction. Um, I haven't fired a Pedersen, but the Luger, other other toggle operated weapons, it's not something you really pay attention to. A slide coming back toward your eye is not much different than this. This assembly is a real pain in the backside with this. The manual has it has you pressing it into your bracing it into your leg in order to pop out this toggle. Don't recommend it. Good shot. Some muffling might be in order as well. An Enfield rifle. I'd almost be disappointed. Well, I would be disappointed. It's 1886. It's Britain. These guys are supposed to be using, I guess, the latest British kit of this fantasy world. So an Enfield rifle of some sort we'd expect to see. In this case, it appears to be a number five jungle carbine, which is a 1940s design, admittedly based on that original 1888 Lee series starting in 1888 with the Metford. I have grabbed one from the rack with um, a grenade launcher spigot and adjustable grenade launching sight and a rubber butt pad just because it breaks up the lines and makes it look like something a bit more fantasy than it really is. But it's actually an experimental grenade launching number five carbine, which I really don't fancy <laughs> in terms of shooting. Not, not great. There are Enfield carbines they could have gone for that are period correct. Although they're based on the number five, it's kind of its own thing. Now, the suppressor, very interesting. We have a long Lee Enfield, a magazine Lee, Lee Enfield, with a Maxim pattern silencer on the end of the barrel. And I don't know that we know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we don't know what the story is there, but somebody put a, a silencer, quote unquote, because that's what Maxim called it, on a Lee Enfield. So, uh, an 1886 Lee Enfield carbine with a silencer on it is actually plausible. There was a, a shot where he sort of snaps it together in the way that Hitman does. That's really cool. Somebody at some point came up with a detachable butt number five. You're supposed to press a latch underneath and it, it dovetails onto the back of the receiver. Not quite like, quite like this, where it's implied that it's the butt socket and a sort of a interrupted thread or lugs or something. But interesting that the, the rifle they've chosen for this, somebody had come up with a takedown version of it. I'm sure other people have done it as well. As, as weird as it looks to have such a short sniper rifle, this is more like police marksman distance, so it's kind of okay. Constable, keep your head down. Where is the hammer? Not hammerless per se, because the there's not enough trigger travel for it to be double action. How is it cocking? These are rhetorical questions. Loading sort of makes sense. Pretty reminiscent of the Hellboy Samaritan revolver, certainly the movie version. It reminds me of the Howder pistol. Well, they've gone for the, yeah, they've gone for the aesthetics of the Lancaster, but with a revolver cylinder. But whereas the Lancaster doesn't need a hammer because it's got an internal revolving striker, that does have a long travel trigger because it has to revolve, cock and release the striker. This could not work. I like the, the, the look of it and the idea of a Victorian Magnum revolver is cool. That said, muzzle flash, the, the smoke trail, the lighting, this all looks, sounds really, really good. The sparks as well. So we're shooting black powder ammo at this time. You might expect these guys to have some early smokeless, but they haven't. Lots of flame, lots of sparks, lots of smoke. That's that's very evocative of, well, the Old West, apart from anything else. The reload's a bit weird. It's like, I think he's throwing in a speed loader. I'm seeing the cylinder revolve, but I'm not sure how it's doing it or when it's doing it relative to his trigger pull. The sort of vent rib on the top is, is quite modern revolver. Yeah, quite quite a weird thing. Very, very early for a submachine gun of this nature. Ground Zero really still the Bergman MP18. This is pretty bang on the MP35, as in 1935. See the barrel, the shape of the barrel shroud? Two diameter, cooling slots, the general shape, the cylindrical receiver does not seem to have Weirdly, the pseudo bolt handle on the rear. Much bigger change is they've got rid of the side magazine, which 
quirkily, is on the wrong side. The magazine housing has been turned into a magazine well underneath the bolt, and they've created a scaled-down Mondragon rifle drum magazine. So what's interesting here is they could have gone with the MP18, with the Luger snail drum magazine, or it automatically looks weird and maybe Victorian. It wasn't. Instead, they've mashed up this with the semi-snail drum magazine of the German Air Force variant of the Mexican slash Swiss Mondragon rifle. <laughs> Very confusing. So that was adapted with a, a drum magazine to give it more capacity because it was used by aircrew. It was this idea of shooting at aircraft before they had decent machine guns. So they took the standard straight magazine and adapted it, or, or rather replaced it, with this big rifle calibre snail drum mag. You can see pictures of that on our online collection on our new website. Check that out. I think this is a good one to deploy Victorian Special Forces logic to. So not, not only is it decades ahead of its time, they have gone for high capacity, and it's just that they've based that on future tech. I might prefer, actually, if they had come up with their own <laughs> design. It doesn't really make logical sense that they would use a design from 1915 for the mag and a machine a submachine gun design from 1935 if they came up with the same equivalent technology it would look different looks like a browning auto 5 shotgun interesting hole there so we've got it we've got a hip fire but it's a very casual hip fire where he's not really tucking his arm tucking it under his arm and bracing it he's just kind of holding it in mid-air and it's recoiling looks and feels good and like a shotgun <laughs> which you'd hope it would but a lot a lot of uh, video game shotguns don't really have that weight and feel uh, he appears to be thumbing cartridges magically through the bolt and into the weapon somehow so the, the reload is quite fudged. I can't tell if the barrel is reciprocating here. So this is a long recoil gun. So the, the barrel and bolt should recoil essentially the length of the cartridge to then extract and eject. Bolt's certainly moving, uh, but it, it's moving independent of the barrel, which appears to be fixed. Real blinking you miss it stuff, but tech, this would appear to be operating on gas or inertia or something rather than long recoil. The real gun introduced in 1898, so really early for a semi-automatic shotgun, but not this early. Stay under cover! Essex M86, thermite rifle. This and the Electra and the Tesla gun seem like real ramp ups in technology. That is a Lewis gun magazine. Lewis gun magazines hold 303 ammunition, not thermite. I think it's meant to be like a mini Lewis gun on top and like a thermite launcher, thermite rocket launcher to be precise. This is more like a grenade launcher, but it's firing like a rocket. Weird muzzle flash on the kinetic part of this combo weapon. The thermite effect on target is very cool and looks somewhat like real thermite. Needless to say, this is extremely advanced for 1886, but I like the fact they've acknowledged that it's brand new, so even in this world it's high tech. Now I don't do uniform, but scarlet tunics with white foreign service helmets doesn't look right to me. Uniform expert reacts, spin off. So from what I just read, the um, machine gun part fires like a cloud of thermite and then it is ignited. Oh, oh okay. Mm. That doesn't seem to match what I'm seeing. <laughs> Looks distinctly like some bullets followed by a rocket. Yeah, that's two distinct operations there. That's confusing. Admittedly, I don't see any cartridge cases coming out. I think you can see it a little better in this clip where the rounds sort of oh. create like a mist in the air and then the flare ignites that. I see. I see. That kind of makes it simultaneously less realistic and more realistic. So yeah. <laughs> We're shooting a, somehow projectiles of thermite powder that somehow hang in the air. And then we are igniting that with just a flare launcher. An under barrel flare launcher is completely plausible, totally doable. We don't, you don't need the tube launcher of a rocket or a recoilless gun. So happy with that. 
Uh, the fact that they've literally just nicked the mag off the Lewis gun is maybe a bit distracting for me. Very inventive, very different, great for a fantasy game, really visually impressive. <coughs> the army. Can we have a swearing expert react, please? I'm pretty sure no Victorian gentleman would use the F word. I think that's still you. Considering <laughs> the colourful language I've heard come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that might still be me, you're right. I was thinking they were going to go like shoulder fired Armstrong gun like artillery with a you know screw breech on the back like a you know the 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 mars pistol has a little bit of an artillery feel to it if you scale that up to a shoulder weapon for me that might work better than this this is this is more like the tesla gun <laughs> with the weird flappy thing on the back i'm not sure what that's doing or why that's there isn't there a recoilless rifle that does that what that flaps what? open the back yeah that's how you like extract the the round Probably, but this doesn't seem to be extracting anything. It's just like getting shoved out the way. Yeah, it's like chuck thing in, thing fires, flap opens at the... Is it chucking out a shell? Must be. Yeah, it must be. But there's no lockup going on. It's literally just a spring-loaded flap that's... that's. I mean, what's that doing? I guess it's stopping the shell from falling out. <laughs> if, you, if you aim it up, it would stop the shell from falling out. Somehow it's also igniting the shell, but then you have electronic stuff or electrical stuff going on that is accelerating the projectile. It's a weird mashup. It's still cool though. I'm being pushed out. Pretty standard sawn off shotgun, but three barrels. A couple of these have been made over the years. The Kiapa Triple Threat, I think it was called, was one of them. I think there's at least one other that's escaping me. Well within the cap capability of the Victorians to create a triple barrel break open shotgun. Just not something that they were a bit too sensible, I think, to, uh, to go for the additional weight. Doesn't really give you any benefit. And of course, shotguns, not really of any military use at this time. More of a police or sporting weapon or criminal weapon. Not very gentlemanly. <laughs> exemplified by that bloke's arm being absolutely torn off. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you're if you're able to trigger all three rounds and hold onto the gun and not break your shoulder, that amount of shot traveling through the body is going to cause some significant damage, needless to say. Whether it would literally traumatically amputate a limb is another matter. Oh, shit. God damn! Steampunk grenade launcher. Doesn't really look like anything we have today. Suffers from Gears of War buttstock syndrome to some extent, in, in that it does have a buttstock. Looks really uncomfortable. Speaking of buttstock, turn it upside down and think about one of the pistols that we just saw. Yeah. Or am I imagining that? No, I don't think you are. I think they've taken the lines of the C96 holster stock that doesn't appear in the game, I don't think flipped it upside down and used it to make a stop. Guess being that shape would make it easier to aim upward. But yeah, that metal strap on the butt is, that's really gonna hurt. This thing's gonna have a fair bit of recoil. You can see, weirdly, you can see the thing recoil and maybe not even contact his shoulder. He's holding it in front of his shoulder instead of into his shoulder, which is not how butt stocks work. Maybe that's because he knows how much it's gonna hurt if he does pull it into his shoulder. And he's just using his muscles to keep it away from himself don't know does it does have a, a vibe of a something like an armstrong mini armstrong gun sort of only that's a solid barrel made up of pieces whereas this is a recoiling concertina style but it, it sort of evokes victorian artillery or maybe first world war artillery but shoulder fired uh, pretty far removed from reality so real mixture of stuff in this one thank you very much for watching guys you asked for it repeatedly and GameSpot have delivered, and I did enjoy that one. I will definitely be playing this game. I was already going to go back and play it anyway. Kind of annoyed that I paid too much attention to the reviews, because it's right up my street in a number of ways, as you guys pointed out in the comments. Some cool guns, a bit of a mishmash, but um, really good nonetheless. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out our Royal Armouries website, our YouTube channel. More, more gun talk over there, as well as Edge Weapons and Armour as well. Come and visit one of our three museums if you can. Um, but regardless of that, we'll see you again next week. And happy Christmas.